Do you remember the big headlines three years ago when the National Ignition Facility announced they'd reached nuclear ignition with their laser shots? Well, they just broke their own record, reached the biggest fusion gain ever, and no one noticed. If someone shoots a laser in a lap and no one reports it, does the weeping press team make a sound? But it was a remarkable shot. And they aren't the only ones who've made remarkable progress in laser-ignited fusion. Let's have a look. Laser-ignited fusion uses what's called inertial confinement. This means that they shoot with the lasers at a target which, due to inertia, can't get away fast enough. So the fuel becomes compressed and ignites, which means it continues burning from its own produced heat. On February 23rd, the National Ignition Facility quietly locked its seventh ignition shot. They squeezed five megajoules of fusion energy from just about two megajoules of laser light, a record gain of almost two and a half. I think what the NIF does is actually more impressive than what they report because the two megajoules of laser energy doesn't entirely go into the target, only about 15% do. If you take that into account, the gain was actually more than 17. But they do waste a lot of energy with their lasers. The NIF uses a total of 192 laser beams that are focused on a fuel target with a deuterium-tritium mix. To deliver the two megajoules to the target, they need to ramp up the laser with an estimated 400 megajoules. If you take this into account, the total gain is just about half a percent or so. But the NIF wasn't built to be energy efficient. It was built to shoot lasers, arguably one of the noblest purposes any facility can have. But this brings up the interesting question of how much can you improve the efficiency? There are a lot of factors contributing to the efficiency. The NIF pumps their lasers with flashlights. First, there are electric losses and losses in the generation of the flashlight. Then there are losses in converting that flashlight to laser light. Then the laser emits infrared, which needs to be converted to ultraviolet, which brings in more losses. But in the past years, there has been a lot of progress on improving laser efficiency. Diode-pumped solid-state lasers have been able to convert electricity to pump light at more than 50% efficiency for a decade, and the record holders now exceed 80%. The NIF also loses a lot of energy because they don't directly shoot the UV beams at the target. After pumping infrared lasers, they convert the light to ultraviolet, but then they bounce the UV light off the golden walls of the pellet that holds the fuel, and that converts it to X-rays, and that goes into the fuel. That is very inefficient. But last year, the laser facility Omega at the University of Rochester showed that if you skip the final step with the X-rays, you can deliver about four times as much energy than the NIF to the fuel capsule. And simulations have shown that if you use the UV laser directly, then that gives you a gain at the pellet of up to 150 or so that would theoretically be 50 times higher than what the NIF does. There was a lot of numbers, but the bottom line is this. First, just switching to a better laser could get you a huge improvement in efficiency. Using an ultraviolet ray laser could avoid losses during the conversion, and avoiding the X-ray conversion can deliver the energy to the fuel more directly. If you take all this into account, the gain could shoot up above a factor of 10. Even if you take into account that you still need to convert the produced energy into electricity, that should be enough to put power into the grid. And indeed, several startups are working on this, such as the American-based company Excimer Energy. The company Focused Energy recently announced they'll build a test project for laser-ignited fusion in a decommissioned nuclear power plant in Germany. And then there is X-Fusion in Japan, so if Elon Musk ever wants to get the ball rolling, he'll have to think of another name. The Chinese have taken note too. In January, the company Planet Labs released satellite images that show a facility near Myongyang that looks very much like the American NIF, but about 50% larger. This sounds very promising, but of course there's a reason why the NIF uses this complicated
use it in direct drive with the gold reflections to get the x-rays is because it's reasonably robust and not so super sensitive to small asymmetries in the shots and pellet. If you skip this step, you need to be super careful about getting everything in the right place. And eventually there is the question of how much it costs. If producing the fuel pellets is too expensive, it doesn't even matter if you get out net energy. It won't be commercially viable. It'll be some while until nuclear fusion powers the city, but it certainly already powers optimism. Problems. I'm sure you have a few, but problem solving is a skill that you can train just like any other. I found that a simple and effective way to do this is with Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.